is Vernon from Vibe Drums, and uh, this is an information video about uh, steel tongue drums, uh, steel pan drums, <coughs> and uh, hand pan drums, and some things you might need to know or might look for before you go and buy one of these drums, whoever makes it or whatever type of drum you get. This is a several part series, and this is the first part. Uh, there's a lot of things you might need to consider before you buy a drum, like how much money you want to spend, um, what type of sound quality you want, how loud do you want the drum to be, uh, how portable do you want it to be, uh, is it being in tune important to you, uh, or is an out-of-tune drum okay, um, what's it made out of, uh, is there any lead content or any contaminants in the, in the steel of the drum that you may not want to have? Um, how concerned are you about the environment and how the drum is made and, and the, the manufacturer's environmental footprint when they make drums? So lots and lots of things to, to consider. Now if you're looking at hand pans or steel pans, they're made from low carbon steel and they're huge. So you have a very, very big drum. So they're not very portable, but uh, the steel on this is only one millimeter thick. So it's 18 gauge steel. And since it's uh, a low carbon or even a high carbon steel, it will rust. You can see signs of rust starting to form on this shell already. So you have to keep them oiled to keep them from rusting. And the thing is, is most people will oil the outside of the drum, but they'll forget that the inside rusts as well. And so they go out of tune and they need to be tuned. So hand pan drums, the difference between a hand pan drum and a steel tongue drum is a hand pan drum is formed by making indentations in the steel so that it gets your nose. Right now it sounds dead because it's not ready together. So hand pan drums are indented, they're not cut. Whereas Steel tongue drums or steel pan drums uh, that cut the notes. Now, steel tongue drums uh, have the notes cut in, and steel pan drums are big like the hand pan. They're made of 18 gauge, very thin steel, and they've got the notes cut like this instead of pressed in like a true hand pan. So, when we look at the shell, the other type of steel that can be used for making a hand pan is this type, and this is also low carbon steel, but you can see it's a little bit different color because this steel has been nitrited. So when you nitrite the steel, it makes it a little bit harder and it helps to slow down the rust. It doesn't stop it, but it does slow it down a bit. So if you're looking at buying a hand pan, you definitely want one that's been nitrited. It's, it's important. Uh, because it makes the drum sound much better, it makes the steel a little harder, it makes it ring better. So this is nitrided steel. This is a, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what the drum is made out of, because that's probably the most important part. And there's, there's different types of manufacturers using different types of steels. And basically, uh, the steel being used is either stainless steel low carbon steel and some people use a high carbon steel. And the thickness of the steel varies as well, anywhere from one millimeter thick in the case of a hand pan, which is 18 gauge, to um, 14 gauge, which is being used by most people using uh, old propane tanks. Uh, propane, uh, 14 gauge is about 1.75 roughly millimeters thick. And uh, our drums, which is 13 gauge, which is 2.25 millimeters thick. And basically, the thicker the steel, the stronger the drum, the longer it'll stay in tune. And also, uh, the more sustain you get out of the note. So with thin steels, it can't hold the, the resonance as, as long and the vibration. So generally speaking, the note duration is really quite short, like you hit it and it's done. Uh, with a thicker steel, you get a much, much longer note duration. 
So the sustain on the note is very long. It keeps going and going and going. Uh, the size of the drum in the resonance chamber also makes a difference in, in how loud the drum is and, and how it sounds. This is what our drums look like uh, before we paint them. So this is solid stainless steel and it's 13 gauge on the playing surface. And again, the nice thing about stainless steel is you don't have to worry about rust and you don't have to worry about any uh, lead because some of the low carbon steels, uh, depending on who makes the steel, may have uh, some lead uh, contained within the steel, which you might be concerned about. Some people are worried about lead, some people not. So it depends on where the steel comes from. If it comes from the U.S., uh, U.S. steel does not have lead in it unless they've added lead in. But steel from other countries, I have no idea what contaminants are in the steel because the quality usually isn't quite as good. Um, this is, uh, we've been making drums since 2008 and this is like our very, very, very first model. And this was made from a propane tank. And it's an old propane tank. It's, uh, you, it's, it failed hydrostat test, which means it can no longer be used for propane service. And generally these people that have these tanks have a lot of them and they're just all too happy to get rid of them. So you can pick up the tank for almost nothing, and sometimes for nothing at all, because all the, the propane guys, they can only just sell it for scrap steel, which is like three or four cents a pound. So it's good because it's cheap. You can get, uh, you can get your shells from your propane tank basically for nothing. So your cost is quite low. But the problem with propane tanks is it's, it's, it's regular steel, so it will rust. And also because it's been made for propane, the steel has become brittle and it's lost some of its elasticity. So, for example, like this note here, I don't know if you can see it, is stuck up a little bit. Now, I'm a little bit afraid to push it, bend it back in place because it is so hard and so brittle that I'm afraid that if I push on it too hard, it won't bend like regular steel. It'll actually possibly break or crack right in here, which will completely ruin the drum. So the steel is very brittle from old propane tanks. One way you can tell whether your drum is made from a propane tank, uh, which is 14 gauge steel, is if it's got a hole in the bottom, like this. Because this used to be the top of the propane tank, and right here is where the valve was to hook up to your barbecue. And so we just basically cut that out. So if you've got a hole that's just straight like this, like this size, a little bit bigger, then chances are your drum, or the drum that is, is being advertised, is made from an old propane tank. And old propane tanks don't sound quite as good. So that's basically the different types of steel being used. It's either 14 gauge steel made from old propane tanks, which is a low carbon steel, and the steel has become brittle because of the propane and because it's failed hydrostat test. The tank is no longer fit for propane service. And I'll do another series just talking about hydrostat testing, what it means and, and, and why these tanks have failed. And then people then take them and make uh, steel tongue drums out of them. There's stainless steel uh, and, and then there's the 18 gauge. And again, the thinner the steel, the weaker the drum, the faster to go out of tune, and also the shorter the note sustain, and, and also thinner makes it a little tinnier. So thinner steel, the sustain on the note isn't very long, the purity of the sound isn't quite as good. But when you're looking at a hand pan with a thin steel, you need that thin steel to get that Caribbean type of calypso sound out of the drum. And because if you made it, it thicker, it would lose that, that tinny sound to it, that Caribbean calypso sound. Okay, so that's a little bit of information uh, about what drums are made out of and what you might want to think about before buying a drum.